All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, so Zach is from Prestwick Construction. So I'm gonna go ahead and let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about, you know, who he is and what, what he does at this construction company. Cool. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, as she said, my name is Zach Walters. I work for Prestwick Construction. Um, I started, uh, I've been in, been in construction for about nine years. Um, got started exactly how you would picture a stereotypical construction worker, wearing tool bags, swinging a hammer, uh, building houses. Uh, did that while I lived out in Colorado. And then, um, when I came back into it, came back to Atlanta, which is where I'm born and raised and went to college, uh, got into general construction. Um, so much larger stuff. Um, and so I've been doing general construction now for seven or eight years. Um, so Presswick Construction, uh, we do, and, and really what I did at my previous company as well is, is multifamily construction. So think apartments, senior living, student housing, stuff like that. So really big buildings with lots of units in them um, where a lot of different people live. Um, and then kind of even more specific within that uh, stick framed. So sometimes if you go downtown and you see an apartment building, it's probably made of concrete and steel. Um, if you go out to, you know, up to Kennesaw State and look at their apartment buildings, they're probably made of wood. Um, and so that's, that's what, um, that's what I've been doing. Um, so yeah, at Presswick, my job is I am the pre-construction and estimating manager. So I take ownership of the process really from the time that, so at Presswick, we're a little unique in that we have two companies, um, Prestwick Development Company and Prestwick Construction Company. Development Company goes out, finds the land, finds the money to build the building. Construction Company builds it. Um, so I work hand in hand with our development company on the really early stages of the job um, to have, once they find a piece of land, they have to lay out the building. And I help them with the process of designing and laying out the building and then also trying to control costs through that. So there's different things you can do that make your building more or less efficient in terms of how much it's going to cost to build it. And I try to help keep them inside the box so that costs don't, uh, don't skyrocket too much on them, which we have varying levels of success with. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's my job. That's what I do with Presswick construction. Um, as far as my education or training, uh, <laughs> I hope I'm not a bad example here. So I went to, I started at Sanford University uh, over in Birmingham. Like I said, I'm from Atlanta. Um, started at Sanford University in Birmingham. Loved it, but ended up coming back after a couple of years to Georgia State because the tuition was a lot cheaper. Um, started out college doing like graphic design stuff. And then when I got to Georgia State, had multiple degrees. Um, not that I got like multiple majors, I guess is what I should say. Uh, <laughs> clarify. Um and then uh, graduated with a degree in interdisciplinary studies, uh, law and society. So I was either, I was planning on going and being a cop um, and then instead started building houses. Uh, and so, and that's just kind of what I fell into. So really one of the more important things in construction is, is experience. And I, I wish I had found it earlier so that I could have done a lot of things through college. Um, there's a lot of great construction companies here in Atlanta and really all over the place where you can learn a ton. Um, and that's really all it is, is it's your, your, the specific training you need for construction is experience. Um, and so if it's something you want to do, the earlier you can get involved, even as a, even as an intern, you know, you're going to start hearing the lingo and picking up on things that, that everybody's doing around you and you can learn a lot from that. Um, Holly, do you want to ask anything or you want me to go into the um, using math and all of that stuff? Yeah, well, uh, I'm also curious, yeah, if you were thinking about being a cop, how, how did that go into construction? Like, where did the idea, I guess, for going into construction Honestly, come from? Honestly, I've always had a very, in my mind, I've always, I was always the kid that was taking things apart and putting them back together. Um, that's just something that made sense to me. And so really I'd gotten the further I got along in college, I was just, I just wanted to finish my degree. And so um, I'm not really sure how I thought I was, I, I had to do a ride along for a class and I really enjoyed it. And I thought I could see myself doing this. Like it's a pretty active job. Um, and 
also through college, I was working, I, so I would spend summers uh, working out in Colorado at a, at a backpacking camp. And when I wasn't doing that, I was helping rebuild their log cabins. Um, because again, it was just something that made sense to me. It was something that I enjoyed. I had an uncle who was in construction. Um, and so I grew up helping him during the summers and stuff like that. And so uh, one summer I, I was out there, I was building log cabins and I was at, I had just graduated college and I was going to come back to Atlanta and finish applying uh, to the police department. And he was like, well, why don't you just out here and build houses? And I was like, I can do that. <laughs> and so it really, I mean, uh, it was really more of just, it's where I landed. Um, and I've never really thought about going back. Like now it's, it's a, it's a good living. I um, it's, it's hard work, but it's, I, I, I find it rewarding to, you know, drive around town and see buildings that I've, that I helped on, you know, many years ago go up. So yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think good for like students who are more hands-on kind of people to like hear about yeah. different kinds of jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So tell us, yeah. How do you, how does like math work in your job? So much math. <laughs> I use so much math. Um, so much when math. I started, when <laughs> I started doing construction, it was a lot of, um, it was a lot of geometry. So, um, oh man, this is going to sound awful, but like, um, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Like we used that equation all the time to make sure that our walls were at 90 degree angles. So, you know, we'd, we'd measure out, we wanted to make sure that, you know, when you're building a house, you want the corners to be true corners. Um, and so, um, you know, it started out with simple stuff like that. Um, lots of, lots of measurements and angles and, um, stuff early on when I was, when I was actually building, um, lots of geometry when you're putting roofs together, um, making all those angles work are, it's very difficult. Um, uh, guys who can frame a roof are, are very talented um, and really good at math. I, and then when I switched into general construction and got more into estimating, it was a lot more um, still measurements and dimensions, but a lot more um, like accounting type math. And so I do a lot with numbers now. Um, lots of, uh, you know, I, the joke I like to make is that we call it estimating, not exactimating. So, you know, we're not trying to hit the number on the head, but when you're putting together a budget for a project that's, you know, let's say it's $45 million and you have to account for all of the stuff it takes to build it, um, you know, just materials. So framing and cabinets and countertops and appliances, all of those things you have to account for, but then you also have to account for, um, you know, if it's a, if it's a material like your appliances, you have to account for sales tax on top. Um, if it's, uh, if it's a, so like our cabinet guys, we pay them to, to supply and install the cabinets. Well, we have to, we have to factor on our general liability insurance on top of that. So it's whatever their number, making sure they have sales tax included. And then also making sure that they've got, uh, or that we're carrying, um, a percentage on top of that to cover the general liability insurance. Uh, all of the percentages we run behind the estimate to calculate, you know, sure it may cost, you know, 40 million to build the, to build the project, but we also have our, our overhead we have to account for. So like paying our employees. Um, and then we also have our profit that we have to account for. So how are we accounting for that on the estimate? So now I do a, just so much with, with numbers. And I mean, as you can imagine, it's, six, seven, 800 line Excel spreadsheets uh, with, you know, anywhere from 10 to $45 million worth of stuff in it to make sure that it's all accounted for. So I do a lot with math. <laughs> Very nice. Um, yeah, it, can you maybe explain? So somebody was like, hey, I wanna do what he does. What would be some steps that they would need to take to, to get a role like yours? Um, like I said earlier, like, I think the most, one of the most important things, um, is to, is to step out and, and find an internship. Like, um, I've, I've worked at two, one larger general contractor here in Atlanta and now one that's m more medium sized. Um, and I mean, like it's, it's, I've always loved when, when kids come in, uh, whether they're high school students and we've seen that less common, but still happens, um, and then like in college, like come in and intern for the summer and like, it'll really give, that's going to give you the best picture of like, is this somewhere I could see myself in the future? Um, as far as, 
education, um, construction management programs are fantastic. Um, making sure, uh, Ken formerly Southern Poly, but now Kennesaw State University has a fantastic construction management, Georgia Tech, Auburn, Clemson. I mean, there's so many, we have a lot of really, really good um, construction management programs around, around the Atlanta area. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think the most important thing is, you know, yeah, it's a little weird to step out and say like, Hey, I'd, I'd like to come learn a little bit more, but um, construction in it is an industry very much where we we're a little bit behind the eight ball. There are not a lot of young people coming into construction, especially into um, estimating is not a very glamorous role. Um, but it's, it's consistent, which is nice. Um, especially with our field jobs, like, our, so like superintendents. So superintendents are like the guys, they're kind of probably what you picture in your head when you think of like a grizzly old construction man with like a big beard and a hard hat and tough skin and all that stuff. Um, and those guys are, they're, they're getting old. Um, and there aren't a whole lot of people that want to do that hard work behind them. And so, uh, there's a lot of, I would say there's a lot of opportunity instruction. Um, yeah. if you're just willing to kind of be a little uncomfortable and ask. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's a, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Ask a question me. real quick. Please? So I'm, I'm Mrs. Hamrick. I'm one of the counselors here. And so we've heard a lot of stuff recently from the people in the construction construction industry saying exactly what you're saying is that the skills gap is is huge. We need people in those careers, whether it's mm -hmm. construction or electricians or plumbers or whatever. Um, but I would love to know, you know, everybody seems to think of that as being a male dominated field, and it probably is. But do you see women getting into those careers as well? Because I think that's something that, that people automatically think, oh, well, that's, that's a man's job or whatever. Mm -hmm. But talk to me about, you know, have you seen women getting into these careers and how do they fit in? And, and um, tell, tell some of the ladies out there that are listening, yeah. this is a career that they can get involved in too. Absolutely. Um, I think traditionally, we, we've seen um, in all the construction companies I've been involved in, we've seen a lot of women in project accounting, project administration, coordinator type roles. And that's really started to change where um, a lot of a lot of the larger construction companies, like they've got very, very successful women that are in like the project manager type role. So like boots, boots on the ground, like out on the project every single day, overseeing all of your uh, your subcontractors, so your your framers, your electricians, your um, your other installers, uh, and that's I think that um, yeah, like I, I feel like my wife would make a much better project manager than I would uh, if she can keep if she can keep me in the, the house in line. Like I mean, I don't think she'd yeah. So um, yeah, there's absolutely a need and an opening for it, and it's something that a lot of construction companies are looking for too. Um, I think that they've started to see uh, this probably isn't a surprise, um, but I would argue construction is a little bit more, not conservative in a political sense, but conservative in their mindset of like, this is kind of the way we've always done things and this is how we're going to do it. And that's really started to change over the last probably 10 to 20 years. And so now a lot of these large construction companies see the value of like, man, women make great project managers. Like we need more women project managers and they're so hard to find because they're just not going to school. They're not going to school for it. Um, and so, yeah, that's, uh, we have, we had like two or three at my old company and I think we've got one or two now. And it, I mean, we're a much smaller company, um, but there's absolutely a place for women in construction. And I would argue that they're going to have, um, they're probably going to have a step ahead of their, of their male classmates, just because that's something that a lot of companies are desiring. Nice. Thank you for that question, Ms. Hamrick. Um, yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about like, you know, we've been in this um, pandemic world um, mm -hmm. for the, you know, the past year. Um, so what, you know, how did that affect your job? And like, if so, how are you seeing yeah. it change at all now? So it did, it did affect my job. Um, kind of playing off what I just said, construction is typically very set in their ways of how they've always done things. And so like the thought of anybody in construction working from home was like, not like it wasn't a thing. Um, and now the, the idea of working remotely is 
it's like we, we often talk about, will we ever fully go back to being in the office five days a week, eight to five? Um, and I, I think that was a good thing that came out of it is it forced us out of our comfort zone into something new. And we've learned a lot about it um, and how to do it well. Uh, as far as the business side of it goes, so specifically within multifamily construction, another step down of what I do is what's called low income housing tax credit work, LIHTC. So it's, it's what it is, is that your traditional apartment complex, when they go get money to build it, um, they're going to, it's all going to be private, private money. So think of just people investing money in to build it, to try to make more off of it or whatever. Um, LIHTC work, it's, it's affordable. So um, what I mean by that is it's money that's coming from, from the government, from tax credits and things like that to build these jobs. And so there's, there's a huge sort shortage in, in affordable housing, whether you're talking about Atlanta or South Carolina or in any real, any area, like there's just a shortage of, 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 um, affordable housing. So our, our pipeline of project future projects has stayed really strong, uh, through this. Um, so that's been good. There's been a lot of construction companies where when the economy turned down, they, yeah. the, okay. the companies that were funded by private money um, yeah. or the jobs that were funded oh. by private money, uh, they kind of, uh, people started to hold on to their money a little tighter. And maybe instead of investing right now and building an apartment complex, they're like, oh, we're going to sit on our cash. Um, whereas the government was still looking to build affordable housing. So We've been fortunate there and that we've stayed busy. Uh, a lot of what we've been fighting now has been uh, material cost increases. So um, framing material, so wood to build the buildings is up 180%. Um, I used to budget $5 a square foot for just the framing material and it's up over 10 now. Um, and it's almost, it's almost laughable because it's like, I, we just never would have thought that, that it would go up this much. I mean, I've, um, I priced, I finished pricing two deals at the end of the year. So at the end of 2020, um, the closings. So when everything, like you close on a house, you close on the deal and then we can start building it. The closings delayed a little bit about three months. And so I had to reprice the framing material package. And so the numbers fresh in my mind, I plugged $475,000 for the framing material in December. And then, um, the market has changed so much that I had to, had to add $350,000 to it last week. And so like, you know, it's 80 to 90% increase in just three months. Um, so that's where we've seen a lot of change. Um, and, and even, you know, for a while there, the big story was the tariffs. Um, you know, China was putting a big tariff on steel. Um, and now we see a lot of uh, the framing material increase. It's hard to get, it's hard to get stuff with the ship that got turned sideways in the Suez Canal last year. Like, all of our appliances that come from China are, are now but are delayed, like all of our light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, stuff like that. Um, so we're very tied to to the global economy and and things like that. So that's another nuance of what we do that can get difficult at times. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, big picture, bigger than I was even thinking. Um, yeah, and I also want to make sure to open it up to, I don't know, students or if there are any of our other yeah, teachers or counselors also have questions. I have some more, but would also love to hear yours. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or you can also put them in the chat. Not everybody at once. All right, well, I'll, I'll keep going. If you guys have questions, though, please let us know. Um, so yeah, what would like, what's like a typical day look like for you? Yeah. So <laughs> as I've, um, I feel like that kind of ties in a little bit to like, you know, long-term career goals and, and things like that. So as I've gotten further along, um, I've been really fortunate to move up some and went from, uh, I guess the best way, like just learning. So doing a lot of what I was told and learning that way to, you know, now six, seven, eight years later, I'm, I'm, I'm helping bring other people along behind me. Um, and so now my day to day, I'm in the office most days now. And um, it's a lot of higher level directing. So like making sure that as we get a set of plans um, that my team is getting them out to our subcontractors to start looking at them. Um, I spend a lot of time working on our pipeline. So understanding, you know, if, 
if they want to close by this date, that means I have to get them the price by this date, which means I need the plans by this date. Um, and making sure that I, my guys are ready to price it then that we're not trying to do too many projects at once because um, things can get hairy. And like I said, it's a lot of numbers. You don't want to get them mixed up. It can cause a lot of problems. Um, so my day-to-day -day is a lot of, um, it used to be a lot of reading construction plans and reading, oh man, I wish it's on the other side of the house where I'd grab it. I have a, I have a specification manual that I have to read for a project that's like, it's probably like 1500 pages and it's front and back and I'm not looking forward to that, but um, I've, I've moved to where I have some ownership over those things and, and, and other people will help me do that. I don't have to do that all by myself, but uh, it's pretty wild looking. Um, yeah, so my day to day, sorry, I feel like I've gone on a couple of trails here. Um, it used to be looking at plans and, and doing what we call takeoffs, so quantifying um, how much tile is on a job. We, we try to come up with a quantity so that when our substance in their number, we can ask them, well, how much do you have? And if there's a big difference between our numbers, we know that something's wrong. Whereas if it's really close, we're like, all right, their prices are probably right. Um, so it used to be a lot of that. And now it's a lot of conversations with, with other folks um, who are managing the project managers and managing the superintendents and making sure, okay, well, if we're gonna price it here and close here, we have the team to go build it right afterwards. Um, lots of talking with subcontractors um, to, you know, you got to keep those relationships strong, uh, especially in a market like ours where construction is doing well. Um, they don't have to build for us. Like they can go build for somebody else if they want to. And so just making sure you got a relationship with those guys. And, you know, if they say, if you say like, Hey, I need a number in three weeks, like they can get you their quote in three weeks. Um, and then, uh, you know, like I talked about the estimates, like tracking our estimates is really difficult. Um, the company I'm with now, previously we had like a really nice accounting program. Now we just, now I use Excel, um, which is good, but very prone to making errors if you're not careful. Uh, and so spent a lot of time just making sure that our estimates are organized. And uh, a big part of my job is being able to explain if, if I turn in a number and it's, you know, let's say it's a million dollars over budget, being able to explain why it's a million dollars over budget. Um, you know, being able to dig into the areas and be like, well, you know, you added, you added this, this retaining wall here and changed it from a modular block to a cast in place. And that's twice as much, you know, people don't like to hear their projects are over budget, but if you can tell them why they're over budget, it goes a lot better. So that's, that's my day to day. That's a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> what would you say <laughs> is, <laughs> um, the best part of your job? Um, I've gotten to where like, I really enjoy, um, sorry, it's feeding time. So baby's getting a little fussy. Um, I've gotten to where I really enjoy, I enjoy putting the budgets together. Um, you know, kind of the same way when I was building stuff, like seeing things come together, like seeing the budgets come together, making the numbers line up, making the projects work. Um, my project or my jobs are very much delayed gratification from the time I estimate them until it's like a building that I can go look at. We're talking anywhere from 15 to 24 or 28 months. Um, so it's a, it's a long, long timeline. Um, so you have to find, you have to find um, gratification in some of the smaller things. Uh, and then I think something that's really important too is no matter where you work, just like in the people that you work with because um, work, work is work. It's going to be hard. But I think if you can like the people that you work with, which I do, um, it makes it it makes it a lot better. You're welcome. Well, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know the bell's probably gonna ring in a little bit, but does anybody have any other questions that they have for Mr. Walters here? And I'm putting in a form in the in the chat, and I'm gonna maybe put on the screen too. If you guys are able to fill out a survey for me, that'd be helpful. Ms. Westbrook, did, do you have a question? I don't know, it looked like you maybe were. About to Just one, one second. Have a good spring break, y'all. Oh, spring break. Nice. Marissa, can you hit my top light on? 